Argyle International Airport IATA, SVD, ICAO, TVSA, often referred to as Argyle Airport or simply IA, is a newly constructed international airport in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, about 5.17 miles from Kingstown. The airport is one of St. Vincent and the Grenadines' most important infrastructure assets and the country's first international airport. This airport connects St. Vincent and the Grenadines to airports like Miami International Airport, John F. Kennedy International Airport, Toronto Pearson International Airport and others in the Caribbean. It is the largest of five airports in the multi-island nation of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the largest international gateway into the country, the others being J. F. Mitchell Airport in Bequia, Cunawan Airport, Mystique Airport and Union Island Airport all in the Grenadines. Argyle International Airport serves as a major gateway to the Grenadines, with several airlines operating an extensive network of direct domestic flights from IA to all destinations in the Grenadines. The airport is the second solar-powered airport in the Caribbean, following VC Bird International Airport in Antigua. The approach and landing, from a southwesterly direction, offer the flying passengers a spectacular aerial view of the hills of Brighton, Diamond and Stubbs as well as Milligan Cay, as the flight path to the runway used for landing is actually a few hundred metres away from these landmarks. A reconstructed Carib Cayo village designated a national historical site and Raku Recreation Park, which features two beaches separated by a rocky headland with a man-made pool, are located near the airport. The project broke ground on August 13, 2008, with a work team of Vincentians and Cubans contingent and the airport officially opened on February 14, 2017 when a Dynamic Airways charter flight became the first international aircraft to touch down at Argyle. The Argyle International Airport replaced the much smaller E.T. Joshua Airport as St. Vincent and the Grenadines' principal airport. During the construction of the new airport, the International Airport Development Company IADC faced numerous challenges and controversies, causing major delays in the construction process. This resulted in the airport being completed five years after the originally forecasted completion date. Federal Aviation Administration (FAA) conducts the International Aviation Safety Assessment Program (IASA), assessing the Civil Aviation Authority (CAA) of each country that has carriers operating to the United States and has classified Argyle International Airport, which operates under the jurisdiction of the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority (ECCAA), a US FAA Category One high status civil aviation jurisdiction. The airport is rated at FAA Group 5 or ICAO Code E and can handle aircraft up to the size and weight of B747-400 model. The airport is a primary hub for SVG Air, a national airline of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, along with Mystique Airways. SVG Air and Mystique Airways have combined to form a SVG Air Grenadine Air Alliance, operating 17 aircraft, with bases in St. Vincent, Antigua and Grenada. Offering visitors and residents a wider choice of international gateways in and out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Air Canada Rouge, American Airlines, Caribbean Airlines, Sunwing Airlines, Leeward Islands Air Transport or LEAT, SVG Air and Mystique Airways currently provide regularly scheduled passenger services at Argyle International Airport. EasySki, which began flying to St. Vincent from Havana, Cuba in June 2017, is currently in negotiations with authorities to recommence its twice-weekly service. Argyle International Airport have non-stop flights to Canada and the United States. The airport receives many international charter flights and is also an important freight airport, which provides cold storage and standard cargo transport. Amerijet International, increased their airlift capacity, using larger aircraft such as the Boeing 767-300 to move more cargo into and out of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. In September 2017, Air Caribe sent two of their fleet, an ATR-72-500 and an ATR-72-600 to Argyle International Airport from Pointe Petra International Airport in Guadeloupe to shelter from Hurricane Maria. The airport is also active in aviation in the Eastern Caribbean sub-region and the affairs of Leeward Islands Air Transport hosting a company meeting, where shareholders and stakeholders met on October 22, 2018 for an update on the Technical Committee report on the restructuring of the airline. History 
Argyle International Airport was built in 2017 with expropriated land in a rural part of St. Vincent's southeast coast, in response to the growing airport traffic needs that E.T. Joshua Airport could not accommodate and also, because the latter had reached its saturation point with no physical space for further growth. The new airport will be able to handle 1.5 million passengers per year, more than four times the capacity at ET Joshua and offer 23 commercial spaces, three restaurants and several spots for kiosks. Increasing the accessibility to this multi-island destination and be a key economic driver for the country, attracting direct flights from Canada, the US, the UK and more, fueling investments. The idea for an international class airport on the main island of St. Vincent goes a long way back. For many years, the islanders have recognized that tourism had the potential to become the country's most important economic sector. For far too long, international vacationers have said that St. Vincent and the Grenadines is the jewel of the Caribbean, except for the fact that unless you are on a boat, you can't get there or it took an entire day to get there. With direct flights, you can now get there in about four to five hours from New York City and Toronto. It now means that you would no longer have to be in transit for hours or overnight in places like Barbados or Trinidad. The airport is the realization of a long held dream of all Vincentians, disadvantaged by such a limitation on air access to the wider world, and it is expected to make travel to and from this country easier, cheaper, and faster. The decision to construct on a greenfield site at Argyle was based mainly on the potential contribution of the international airport to increased investments in sectors such as tourism, agriculture and services as well as the physical restrictions on expanding the existing E.T. Joshua Airport. The official opening of the new Argyle International Airport marks an important chapter in St. Vincent and the Grenadines aviation industry and economic development. With its advanced capabilities, the airport will play a major role in placing St. Vincent and the Grenadines on the map as an ideal choice for Caribbean leisure travelers, as well as a convenient transfer hub, bolstering the country's tourism traffic. This new national milestone would not have been possible had it not been for the visionary leadership of Dr. The Honorable. Ralph E. Gonsalves and the hard work and dedication of hundreds of individuals collaborating together towards a common goal, one that will bring about the prosperity of the entire Vincentian nation. The airport commenced full operations on February 14, 2017, replacing the decommissioned E.T. Joshua Airport. Argyle International Airport is the only airport in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that offers international scheduled flights and is also served by scheduled, low fare, business and charter carriers, with many services operated to the U.S. and Canada. It also supports corporate and general aviation. <laughs> <laughs> aviation timeline 90 years ago St. Vincent and the Grenadines entered the age of flight On April 8, 1927, four Loening amphibian planes, including the San Francisco, the New York, the San Antonio and the St. Louis piloted by American military officials, commanded by Major Herbert A. Darg a major general in the United States Army Air Forces, landed in St. Vincent in the sea at Kingstown Harbor, since St. Vincent lacked an airport. This event marked the birth of aviation activity in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. However, it was realized that changing technology would require a permanent runway and airport. On July 29, 1932, a Trinidadian pilot named Michael Cipriani flew into St. Vincent and landed his plane at the Diamond Airfield, a grass airfield surface. The island has a history of aviation with its first airport at Diamond, which was officially commissioned in 1934. The IATA code designation SVD came to life due to the first landing strip at Diamond Street. Vincent Diamond in the 1950s, Villa was the choice for the airport. The Grumman Goose amphibious airplanes landed and took off from the water at a seaplane base in front of Villa Beach in the Young Island Channel. For a brief period, St. Vincent and the Grenadines had been accessible only by helicopters or boats and seaplanes. In 1961, the demand on aviation outgrew Villa and the airport then moved on to Arno's Vale, which became E.T. Joshua Airport, which had served the island for decades but had only been able to receive regional flights from neighboring islands in the Caribbean. Argyle International Airport was inaugurated on February 13, 2017, by Prime Minister Ralph Gonsalves. 
The new airport was officially launched followed by an overnight operational transfer. When airlines moved their domestic and international operations to this facility, official opening of Argyle International Airport. The country closed ET. Joshua Airport as of midnight on the February 13, 2017 and operations began at Argyle International Airport with the inaugural flight LIA 560 leaving IA at 6.45 am on February 14, 2017 for Barbados via Liat. Costs <laughs> 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 The Argyle International Airport is the largest capital project in the history of the country, with its estimated cost of construction of US$259 million or $700 million East Caribbean dollars price tag representing nearly one half of St. Vincent and the Grenadines' gross domestic product. The new airport was financed by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines with grants, donations and loans from countries including Cuba, Venezuela, Trinidad and Tobago, Republic of China Taiwan, Mexico, Austria, Malaysia, Turkey, Georgia, Qatar, Iran and Libya. Since the government didn't have the required resources to build it, diverse nations were effectively put into a «coalition of the willing». Soft loans were obtained from the Alba Bank, Petro Carib and the CARICOM Development Fund. Other loans were negotiated, too, from other financial institutions, facilitated through export credit guarantees from state agencies in Canada, United Kingdom and the United States of America. While there were many small contributions, there were several large contributions made by two groups, the Returning Nationals SVG and the Friends of the Argyle International Airport USA. Every little bit of financing raised was critical to the project, including the well-promoted «Drop a Dollar» campaign, fashioned by the Consul General to Canada, Fitz Huggins. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines sold lands in order to finance the purchase of the built properties and vacant lots at Argyle so as to site the airport. The government contribution to the project is estimated at around 30% of the total cost. Supportive Vincentians have also made their own contributions. Overview Argyle International Airport is the sole international airport of the five airports serving St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The airport has portraits of Fidel Castro, Hugo Chavez and Patrick Manning on a wall in the International Departure Lounge. The late former leaders of Cuba, Venezuela and Trinidad and Tobago respectively, along with the former president of Taiwan, Chen Shui-bian, formed the Coalition of the Willing who first pledged support and their country's resources for the airport project. A plaque was later dedicated in the terminal building as a symbol of the friendship and cooperation between the governments and peoples of the Republic of China Taiwan, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Attempts by the previous government led by Sir James Fitz Alan Mitchell, Premier and Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for 18 years, Premier 1972–1974, Prime Minister 1984–2000 to lengthen the E.T. Joshua Airport runway were unsuccessful. Engineers had advised that the runway could have been extended by 2,000 feet into the sea, as requested by American Eagle. At a projected cost of US$50 million, this would have allowed regional jets, with service as far as Miami and South America with up to 120 passengers, to safely fly in and out of E.T. Joshua Airport. According to Prime Minister Mitchell, his government invited tenders for the final design at Arnos Vale. He stated, I turned over the contract documents for a successful tender by a Canadian company to my successor Arnhem Eustace to sign, but he decided to wait until the next election which he lost and cancelled the visit arranged for Kuwaiti officials." The original conceptual designs for the airport were developed by RCGA Architects Interior Designers one of the pillars of the election manifesto of the government, the Unity Labour Party (ULP) administration led by Dr. The Honorable Ralph E. Gonsalves, that came to power in 2001, was to build a modern airport on St. Vincent, capable of dealing with commercial jet liners. In 2003 and 2004, the government held firm on its election promise and began to put systems in place to get the development of the airport building underway. On August 8, 2005, Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves, at a town hall meeting at the Methodist Church Hall in Kingstown, announced plans for the construction of an international airport at Argyle. 
On July 13, 2008, thousands of Vincentians flocked to Argyle to witness the symbolic blast of Johnson Hill, which signaled the official start of construction. On August 13, 2008, earthworks at the airport site began with the clearing and grubbing of the area, demolition of houses and removal of the top soil in the first kilometer of the runway. According to Dr. Rudy Mathias, CEO of the IADC, the private limited liability company, owned by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which spearheaded the airport development. From the outset, there were huge challenges, first finding a good site because St. Vincent is a mountainous country. Most of the people on the island live on the coastal areas. So there are not many places where you have enough flat land to build an international airport, which has a runway 9,000 feet long. Eventually, a site was found, but it wasn't flat. Three mountains had to be reduced, two large valleys needed to be filled, a river spanned and the purchase of 135 homes and land 275 acres of land cost the IADC about US $60 million owned by private individuals to create an area flat enough to house an airport and its runway. Second finding financing given the enormous construction cost, relative to the size of the local economy. Street. Vincent and the Grenadines has a very small economy and a small tax base, so the financing had to be creative to work. The IADC also had to consider some special interest issues, such as the removal of the Catholic Church and cemetery in the area and the preservation of the petroglyphs. The total cost estimate for the airport was four times what it cost to buy the site, in the region of US $240 million, which goes some way to explaining why the country hadn't had this airport before then. These challenges are also what make the delivery of the airport so remarkable. Matthias described the Argyle International Airport as one of the most modern and functionally efficient facilities in the region. On February 14, 2017, the government fulfilled its commitment to building the long awaited and much needed facility. Topic: <laughs> Choice of location. The without project scenario implies that the existing E.T. Joshua Airport would have to be extended. According to the conclusions of previous studies this option, however, is not financially or economically justifiable and considered as technically unfeasible. Due to various site-related factors an expanded airport at Arnos Vale would not gain classification as an international airport under International Civil Aviation Organization and Federal Aviation Administration's regulations and standards. While it would be possible to extend the existing runway to the required length, the width required for an international airport strip cannot be achieved at this site. The existing restrictions on landing and takeoff are impossible to alter in Arnos Vale, as none of the required changes at Arnos Vale would alleviate the problems related to downwind takeoff. In practice and because of prevailing tailwinds, jet aircraft and even turboprop aircraft would have to operate at reduced passenger and payload levels, even if the runway would be extended. Besides the possible upgrade of the ET. Joshua Airport and the extension of its runway, two other sites were being considered for the construction of the new airport to accommodate more passengers and larger aircraft from cities that are further away, Argyle on the eastern side of the island and Kitchen on the southeast. The Kitchen site was technically feasible for an international airport, but its estimated cost was prohibitive in that it was at least twice the cost of a possible construction at Argyle. In any event, the Kitchen site had enormous environmental problems and would have rendered the core. Hotel lands, on St. Vincent more problematic for useful development. Compared to the other alternatives studied, the Argyle site was technically feasible and offers three main advantages. The entire runway is located on the land. The runway is more or less perpendicular to the Yambu River. There is an advantageous relation between cut and fill volumes, the disadvantage is, the still relatively large volume of excavation works and quite costly for the construction of an international airport, but this applies to all alternatives. Thus on the central economic, financial, technical, aeronautical and environmental grounds, Argyle was assessed by the experts to be the best available site. As a result, Argyle was selected as the site for the new international airport and work began on August 8, 2008. The distance between Argyle International Airport and ET. Joshua Airport is approximately 4 miles .4 as the crow flies. <inaudible> <inaudible> Opening 
On December 29, 2016, after five years of being behind schedule to open Argyle International Airport, its opening on February 14, 2017 was announced by Prime Minister Ralph Gonsalves and reported in the Antigua Observer and the Stabroke News. On January 23, 2017, the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority grants authorization for commencement of operations at the IA. On February 13, 2017, a flag raising and military parade was held as well as the unveiling of a commemorative plaque. The ceremony was addressed by Prime Minister Gonsalves, Taiwan's ambassador to the island and other government officials. February 14, 2017 will forever be a «red letter day» in the annals of our history. Tempo Networks, the first and only pan-Caribbean media and entertainment company was in St. Vincent for the official opening of the Argyle International Airport. As part of the media and promotional campaign leading up to the opening, the Agency for Public Information API, in collaboration with the Office of the Prime Minister and Tempo Cable Television Network, had teamed up to produce a series of programs, entitled, The Realization of a Dream, the coming on stream of the Argyle International Airport. The event had morphed into a regional success which saw some foreign dignitaries, including presidents, vice presidents, current prime ministers and former prime ministers from the region in attendance. Many of them congratulated the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines on an astounding achievement. Thousands of people, enthusiastic about the new aerial installation, witnessed the inaugural events presided over by Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves. In a part of his eloquent speech, Gonsalves pointed to myriad financial, managerial, engineering and political challenges that threatened to thwart the project which is the largest capital project ever undertaken in the island's history. At the ceremony Gonsalves said, whatever we set our minds to achieve, with patience and calm, we can achieve, as we have seen it here. This is a bridge to the world. And this plan didn't just come from us. It is a combination of human intelligence and divine inspiration. It was history in the making when Dynamic Airways 767-300 ER landed at the Argyle International Airport that morning around 7.07 am. The airline had the privilege of being the first commercial international flight to land. Making its way from New York City with a number of passengers, then it was on to Guyana. Later EasySki 737-200 landed from Cuba with a number of Vincentian students and 60 former Cuban workers. Caribbean Airlines made an inaugural chartered flight out of New York City, while Sunwing Airlines scheduled a chartered flight from Toronto. These two airlines touched down at the Argyle International Airport one hour apart for the grand opening, landing an international aircraft at an international airport in St. Vincent and the Grenadines was a dream came through for Vincentian pilot Captain Daniel Gibson, the man who commandeered the Sunwing Airlines, chartered especially to bring Vincentians home for the historic opening of the Argyle International Airport Topic. First anniversary. The Argyle International Airport IA, celebrated one year of operations on February 14, 2018. To mark this first anniversary, a small group of aviation enthusiasts, based in London and San Francisco, with family ties in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, had funded what appears to be one of the most spectacular LED chandeliers in the region. The chandelier served as an anniversary gift to the IA and was dubbed, Vinci Love. Topic: Aircraft spotting. The airport has no official area to view flight traffic, but Argyle Airport's runway and its proximity to a parallel public road have made it a popular destination for plane spotters. There are several spots that could be used as unofficial vantage points for aircraft, offering the public an ability to legally experience landing approaches and takeoffs at a very close range. The Johnson Hill. Area in Argyle Gardens located on the east side of the runway is a prime location for aircraft spotting. With a clear view of the terminals, spotters may watch such a wide variety of commercial airliner activities at the airport. Here, visitors can watch planes take off, land and taxi to and from runway 04, 22. It is credited with having one of the best airport views in the Caribbean. On opening day vehicles and spectators lined Johnson Hill to witness the historic landing of Dynamic Airways, the first commercial international flight to land at the airport. 
A year later on Saturday, February 17, 2018 many Vincentians returned to celebrate the first anniversary of the opening of the Argyle International Airport. Traffic Argyle International Airport is a small international airport that mainly serves inter-Caribbean flights, intra-island flights, chartered flights and limited international flights. Before international scheduled flights into the IA become fully regularized, charter flights are expected to serve Vincentians abroad with non-stop air travel to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. However, due to limited direct international flights, some visitors and Vincentians who wish to travel extra regionally continue to make connecting flights to and from Argyle International Airport with regional carriers like Mystique Airways, One Caribbean, SVG Air, and Liat via Grantley Adams International Airport in Barbados, Piarco International Airport in Trinidad, Hewanora International Airport in St. Lucia, or the Maurice Bishop International Airport in Grenada. Besides the opening international charter flights, two other international charter flights landed at the Argyle International Airport for St. Vincent and the Grenadines Vinci Moss 2017, late June, early July, Miami Air International from Toronto, and Sun Country Airlines from New York. Air Canada Rouge made their inaugural flight from Toronto Pearson International Airport to Argyle International Airport on December 14, 2017. While Caribbean Airlines began weekly non-stop service between Argyle International Airport and New York John F. Kennedy International Airport on March 14, 2018. On 2 May 2018, American Airlines announced new weekly non-stop flights to IA from Miami which commenced on 15 December 2018. Year-round flights from Toronto, New York City and Miami are now selling. Topic Facilities Topic Infrastructure The Argyle International Airport, IA, which serves commercial passengers, as well as general aviation is built on 290 acres 117 hectares site and includes a passenger terminal building the airport has two adjacent terminals in one building with multiple gates that board from the ramp and two gates with jetways, a cargo terminal building, an air traffic control ATC tower, aircraft rescue and fire fighting ARF stations, signage, access roads, a runway, three aprons, two taxiways and other infrastructure. The general aviation facility includes aircraft parking and maintenance facilities. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Meteorological Services operates a weather station at the airport attached to the Civil Aviation Department. The integrated passenger terminal is used for both international and domestic air traffic. There are no overnight accommodations at the airport but there are plans to build an airport hotel at Diamond to serve transit flyers. Topic: Runway and aprons. Argyle International Airport usually receives a wide variety of long, mid, and short-haul aircraft. The airport's single runway northeast-southwesterly direction is 04/22, having a length of 2,743 meters (9,000 feet) long and 45 meters (148 feet) wide, with turning bays at the end for backtracking. The runway length does not include a 197 feet 60 meters paved over run on each end. The 04 runway is Argyle's main approach pattern. There are two taxiways, Bravo perpendicular to the runway and Charlie positioned at 45 degrees from the runway connecting the runway with the aprons and a partial parallel taxiway Alpha. The airport aprons can accommodate up to 30 airplanes two Aerobridge and 28 remote simultaneously and is designed to accommodate wide-body jet airliners as large as the Boeing 747-400. IA doesn't have a Visual Docking Guidance System or Parallax Aircraft Parking Aid, all stands are assisted by ground operations using marshalling wands handheld illuminated beacons. As a result of the trade winds that blow northeast across St. Vincent, runway 04 is usually used for landings, i.e. for approaches from the southwest, while takeoffs are made from runway 04 towards the northeast. This results in a typical flight path for arriving aircraft along the south coast of St. Vincent, while departing flights usually fly along the east coast of the island. 
However, when the wind direction changes, such as with passing hurricanes or tropical systems, landings are made using runway 22 from the northeast, while the runway for takeoffs is runway 22 towards the southwest. The aprons are categorized as commercial, general aviation and cargo aprons. The commercial apron covers 35,632 square meters, 383,540 square feet, and has 3 nose in aircraft parking stands for wide body aircraft and 6 parallel aircraft parking stands for twin engine turboprop short haul regional airliners such as the ATR-72. While the general aviation apron, located south of the commercial apron, covers 46,784 square meters (503,579 square feet) and is available for use by single-engine aircraft and helicopters, although the ramp doesn't have a designated helipad, recreational flights and single-pilot operations are also permitted. The cargo apron, located further south below the general aviation apron, covers an area of 7,920 square meters square feet and also includes parking space for aircraft. The cargo apron is capable of handling two wide-bodied aircraft. Terminals <inaudible> 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 The signature IA profile, suggestive of the design of the passenger terminal building seeks to transfer into architectural language, images of the sea waves, sea shells and wings of the sea birds as well as the colors of the national bird and flag. Its main characteristic is the roof that was designed by Sisi Engineering Consultants, Inc., Taiwan and constructed by another Taiwanese firm, Overseas Engineering and Construction Company OECC. Argyle is an international airport with separate departure and arrival sections for domestic and international services. The passenger dual international, domestic terminal building has three floors First floor, pre-security area, restaurant, bar, shopping, ticketing counters, apron level departure gates, transport services, banking, arrival facilities, including immigration, customs and baggage claim, second floor, aerobridge arrival and departure gates, IA administrative offices, conference room, viewing decks and waving galleries, post-security area, including duty-free shopping, food court, café, bars and lounges, third floor, VIP lounges, including a government VVIP lounge for visiting Heads of state. The passenger terminal building was constructed with about 13,470 square meters (144,990 square feet) of floor space to accommodate 1.5 million travelers per year at the Argyle International Airport, with a dedicated air cargo terminal building used for international freight operations. Although there is no separate terminal building for general aviation aircraft, the airport provides full FBO services to private and charter aircraft owners pilots and facilities for passengers departing and arriving on private aircraft and business jets including five lounges and conference room. At the expected rate of growth of passengers, the Argyle International Airport Terminal Building, as designed, is expected to meet the needs of travelers for the next 20 years. The state-of-the-art new integrated terminal building is divided into two sections, the International Terminal and the Domestic Terminal. The International Terminal was built to accommodate 1,000 passengers per hour for arrival or departure. The Domestic Terminal is used for intra-island travel between the mainland St. Vincent and its sister Grenadines Islands. The terminal building has nine gates in total, two with international aerobridges and seven ground-level tarmac departure, arrival gates one international, four regional and two domestic. Both terminals cater to the needs of all travelers with a wheelchair service available upon request as well as several service facilities, duty-free shops and a currency exchange bureau banking provided by the Bank of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, BOSVG. The airport was designed with two viewing decks and waving galleries, one each on the second level of both terminals. Smoking is prohibited in almost all areas inside the terminal, with a few exceptions in the designated areas. <laughs> <laughs> International terminal 
The International Terminal, which is used for international arrivals and departures, is equipped with an automated baggage handling system, an integrated check-in system, three elevators, two escalators for ease of passenger movement throughout the building, two baggage claim carousels and two state-of-the-art glass-walled jet bridges for international travel and docking of large commercial aircraft allowing passengers to board and disembark without going outside or being exposed to the elements, plus ticketing, security checkpoint, customs and immigration. The airport's post-security concourse and gate area was designed with a glass wall to separate arriving and departing passengers. The International Terminal operates under a call-to-gate system in which passengers wait in a main seating and shopping area, they then proceed to the gate once flight information is posted. The design meets IATA service standards and complies with ICAO safety and security standards. Travelers also have several options as it relates to dining and shopping. It has all of the facilities of a modern airport. Topic: <inaudible> Domestic Terminal. The Domestic Terminal exclusively handles domestic flights within St. Vincent and the Grenadines, catering to passengers traveling to and from the Grenadines, with airports on the islands of Bequia, Cunawan, Mystique, and Union Island, with water taxis or charter yachts to the Tobago Cays and Mayoro, and private boat transfers to the exclusive luxury island retreats on Palm Island and Petite St. Vincent from Union Island. This terminal features its own check-in, airside facilities, baggage claim carousel and arrivals hall, but no customs and immigration facilities. Flights arriving from other countries cannot use the domestic terminal, although some departing regional flights on local carriers with stops in the Grenadines use the terminal. Both the arrivals hall and the departures hall are on the same floor in the one-story domestic terminal. The domestic terminal is located next to the International Arrivals Hall and boasts a VIP lounge, a grab-and-go and an outside bar. <coughs> cargo terminal The cargo terminal located south of the passenger terminal and adjacent to the aircraft maintenance hangars is used for cargo imports and exports. The airport has allotted an extensive amount of area for cargo operations. The facility includes a large building with a 10,000 square feet (930 square meters) warehouse space, including a section for refrigerated freight, a perishable cargo handling facility which offer direct ramp access for cargo airlines as well as exporters of perishable goods, a dedicated cargo apron, vehicle parking and a truck maneuvering area. The airport's cargo handling facilities include X-ray equipment, heavy fork lifts, roller pallet lifts, belt loader, dolly for cargo pallets and pushback tug. The airport is a gateway for foreign export. Freight airlines such as Amerijet International make regular trips to Miami and other Caribbean destinations. <laughs> Air Traffic Control Tower The Air Traffic Control Tower is a four-story building positioned on elevated land immediately to the south of the cargo handling facilities and aircraft maintenance hangars. The upper level of the control tower houses the aerodrome and ground control. The approach control and instrument room is on the third level, while the emergency operation center is on the second level, with rest and recuperation facilities for air traffic control officers on the lower level. From the tower, air traffic controllers are able to see 5 miles kilometers beyond the thresholds of the runway plus a complete view of the runway, taxiways, aprons and the approach and takeoff zones of the runway in compliance with ICAO standards. The tower, additional building complex and its associated technical block and mechanical plant building are part of the civil aviation compound with the Aviation Services Department consisting of Air Traffic Services Meteorological Services Aviation Security Oversight Navigation The airport is equipped with Modernized Instrument Landing System and navigational aids such as VHF Omnidirectional Range Distance Measuring Equipment and Non-Directional Beacon along with a fully lit runway with runway edge lighting, runway end identifier lights taxiways and apron for night operations Precision Approach Path Indicators POPI, Approach Lighting System ALS, Radio Navigators and Automated Weather Observing System AWOS. 
The airport's official operating hours are 6 o'clock to 2200. Topic: Fire and Rescue. The Aircraft Rescue and Fire Fighting facility is located opposite to the passenger terminal building across the runway on the eastern side of the airport and meets the required response time to any incident in accordance with ICAO Annex 14. IA falls under Category 9 of the Aerodrome Category The building accommodates up to 16 officers with dorms, kitchen and dining facilities, training room, alarm room, paramedic bay, apparatus and ambulance bays. There are 33 IA firefighters, who are trained through various local and international institutions including College of the Rockies in British Columbia, Warren County Career Center in Ohio, Institution of Fire Engineers in England and Fire Emergency Services Training Institute in Canada. Four of our firefighters are also experienced medics, one with a master's degree in occupational and environmental safety and health from the University of the West Indies IA Emergency Services employees are cross-trained as firefighters and first responders. Our three Oshkosh Striker firefighting vehicles at IA each carries 3,300 gallons of water, 420 gallons of aqueous film-forming foams AFFF, and 450 pounds of dry chemical purple K PKP. As it relates to the discharge rate, AIA's bumper turret trucks discharge 300 gallons of water per minute while the roof turret trucks discharge 1,250 gallons. <laughs> <laughs> Ground transportation The airport can be reached via nearby Windward Highway. Ground transportation to and from the airport is limited to taxi and private vehicles. Public transit does not serve the airport. Taxi service and several car rental agencies, like Avis and Benz Auto Rentals, are available from the airport. There is also a commercial car park to accommodate about 256 vehicles, space for six full size buses, 10 mini vans, and additional space for 50 taxis and 40 rental cars. Two airport employee parking lots are located on both sides of the passenger terminal building. The airport recently introduced an automated car park system for short-term paid parking. Topic passenger services The airport contains a small historical display near the international departure check-in. The IA Interpretation Center has captured AIA's construction over the years 2005 to 2017 and the significant players along the way. A 1,000 feet long mural painted by first year students of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Community College. There are also numerous art photography displays by local artists, like Calvert Jones and Lennox Dinks Johnson around the terminal. There is a full restaurant, High Flyers restaurant, and two cafe, bars, one each in the check in and transit area. Gonsalves Liquors and the Trend Apparel and Fashion Accessories duty free shop in the post security area as well as Giggles Souvenirs and local craft store and St. Vincent Jewelry located pre-security near the entrances. Banking, telecommunication Digicel and Flow, free Wi-Fi access and mobile charging stations throughout the airport, VIP lounges, a conference room and a tourist information center managed by the Ministry of Tourism located on the arrival side. Waiting times for check-in and baggage claims are relatively short compared to other larger regional airports. The airport is not crowded and basic facilities are available for users. Flight Information Display System FIDS, Public Address PA system and airline's self-service check-in kiosks are there for passengers' convenience. k and Aviation Holdings will soon commence fixed-based operations FBO to provide additional service activities incidental to air transportation and construct a commercially important people CIP lounge that can be used by any passenger traveling in any class, on any airline, through any terminal at the airport. Passenger facilities were designed to serve 1.5 million passengers per annum. Topic airlines and destinations The busiest international routes are Toronto and New York, while the busiest regional routes remain Barbados and Trinidad. One Caribbean has filed an application for a foreign air carrier permit with the U.S. Department of Transportation ahead of plans to offer ad hoc charter flights to any points in the United States from St. Vincent and the Grenadines and other OECS Organization of Eastern Caribbean States countries. 
The following airlines operate regular scheduled, charter flights, domestic and international flights to and from Argyle International Airport. Passenger Cargo Notable flights On December 6, 2015, Elliot ATR 72-600 plane ECCAA test flight, with 53 passengers including Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonsalves on board, landed at an uncompleted Argyle International Airport. The flight was greeted by a sea of cheering red-clad supporters of the ruling Unity Labour Party and was one of seven planes that landed that afternoon. Regional airline Liat operated the last flight out of the E.T. Joshua Airport on the night of February 13, 2017 and ferried its overnight aircraft from the old airport at Arnos Vale to the new airport at Argyle. The ferry flight saw Prime Minister Gonsalves, along with his wife, senior management from Liat, including the chair of the board Dr. Jean Holder and officials from ICAO and ECCAA, as well as government officials enjoying the short flight. Other facilities The airport houses the St. Vincent Outstation of the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority. The Civil Aviation Compound, which houses the Aviation Services Departments of Air Traffic, Meteorological and Aviation Security Oversight is on the airport grounds. SVG Air Headquarters and Customer Relations Department are on the airport property. Mystique Airways Headquarters, Aircraft Maintenance Hangar and Facilities are on the airport property. The Mystique Company, Air Adelphi Mystique Shuttle Aircraft Maintenance Hangar, Repair and Overhaul MRO facility are on the airport property. The airport is connected by a 722 meters (2369 feet) subsea pipeline spanning from a tanker's mooring position off Stubbs Bay to a pump house located at the southern end of the runway and to the Rubis Aviation Fuel Storage Facilities, the supplier of unleaded kerosene (Jet A1) and Avgas (Aviation Gasoline Aviation Fuels) at the Argyle International Airport. Due to the limited space, the fuel tank farm is located on a hill behind the cargo terminal and maintenance facilities hangars. A solar photovoltaic PV renewal energy system, which supplies the Argyle International Airport with 597 kilowatts of electricity, currently have three arrays of solar panels mounted on the southeast side near runway 04 on airport property. Fixed base operations Fixed base operators based at Argyle International Airport are IA Handling Services and Vinci Aviation Services. They handle fueling, ground handling, aircraft cleaning, cargo service and aircraft maintenance. <laughs> Incidents and accidents Liat Flight 319, on August 4, 1986, a Liat de Havilland Canada DHC-6 Twin Otter crashed into the Caribbean Sea. The aircraft was en route between St. Lucia and St. Vincent when it crashed due to poor weather conditions, while on approach. After a full day's search failed to find a trace of the Twin Otter, all of the 11 passengers and two crew were presumed dead. 19 November 2006 SVG Air Aero Commander 500S, on a flight from Cunawan to St. Vincent, was over the western end of Bequia on its final approach to St. Vincent when it vanished. There was no distress call. Wreckage was found in the sea. The pilot and single passenger are presumed dead. 5 August 2010 SVG Air aircraft on a flight from St. Vincent to Cunawan crashed off Cunawan with only the pilot on board, not found. 29 August 2018 – Caribbean Airlines Boeing 737-85P flight BW-552 suffered a suspected bird strike and subsequent engine vibrations after takeoff from Argyle International Airport St. Vincent and the Grenadines on a flight to John F. Kennedy International Airport, New York City. The flight crew decided to divert to the home base at Piarco International Airport, Trinidad and Tobago. 
A safe landing was made at Piarco International Airport at 14:35 Coordinated Universal Time, 65 minutes after takeoff. Topic: In popular culture. Trinidadian soca artist Benjai recorded an official music video for his song, Phenomenal, in 2015 at several locations in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, namely, Long Island at Indian Bay, Argyle International Airport site, and Beachcombers at Villa, Oscar James, a Vincentian Georgetown born singer, song writer, and player of several musical instruments, released a new song in 2015 on the Argyle International Airport. Ramon Jose Juan Diaz, a Vincentian soca artist, released a song, International Airport. About the Argyle International Airport, Groovy D's signature song, Touch Down, is the soundtrack to this video produced by Calvin Terry Gooding. To celebrate the opening of the Argyle International Airport, Welcome to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, written and composed by Mark James of the Malizwe Brothers. This song was written to showcase the beauty of the islands, including the Argyle International Airport and its people. The airport is featured in Discover SVG's promotional videos, Aya It's Not Just an Airport. Argyle International Airport Inauguration", Sights and Sounds, "'Vinci Moss", Charter Flights and American Airline Inaugural Flight to SVG, the International Airport Development Company IADC documentary video We Have a Dream, Argyle International Airport Official Documentary, the operators of IA released videos entitled Argyle International Airport Travel Tips and Virtual 360 Degrees Tour, Argyle International Airport, Argyle International Airport's instructional video, IA Automated Car Park System, FDI Magazine featured location, street. Vincent and the Grenadines set for takeoff with the opening of Aya. Topic: Controversy. Some observers have questioned whether St. Vincent and the Grenadines needs an international airport. If it does, they ask, can the country afford to build and maintain an international airport while running an 151 million dollars deficit as of February 2016? All of this with public sector expenses increasing Prime Minister Gonsalves announced in Parliament in January 2016 that wages and salaries for central government employees will experience a «huge increase» in 2016 by 7.3 million EC dollars taking the total to EC $281.8 million. The government also owes the private sector an amount nearing 100 million East Caribbean dollars. The new airport was originally scheduled to open in 2011. As of February 2016 the project has cost in excess of EC $729 million with increases in costs expected and has suffered from many delays. Paving on the runway was still incomplete as of February 2016, in a «historic» address on August 8, 2005, Prime Minister Gonsalves stated. Foreign investors often shy away from St. Vincent and the Grenadines when the limitations of air access arise due to the absence of an international airport." Critics have responded saying that the Prime Minister's statement is invalid and incorrect. On the contrary, many foreign concerns have invested in St. Vincent and the Grenadines from as early as the 1960s, after the Arnos Vale Airport was constructed and later renamed in memory of the humble E.T. Joshua. These investments include the highly successful Mystique Company which also uses a well-organized, very effective shuttle from Grantley Adams International in Barbados direct to Mystique, which has its own appropriately sized airstrip. It is a historical fact that the airstrip on Mystique was deliberately restricted in size as a function of the vision for Mystique as a very private, ultra-luxury destination that, therefore, would not want to facilitate any aircraft with a capacity to carry more than six persons at a time to Mystique. Mystique Company runs an internationally renowned, private, exclusive resort, one of the most successful globally, catering to the world's wealthiest, and has done so for 50 years, all without an international airport in St. Vincent. This was also accomplished by the several mid to high end tourism plants in Bequia, Union Island, and Kunawan, which all have airports as well. See also St. Vincent and the Grenadines List of airports in St. Vincent and the Grenadines List of airports in the Caribbean Transport in St. Vincent and the Grenadines 
List of seaplanes and flying boats <laughs>